right, so this lesson is on the perfect tenses, and it is our fifth lesson on verbs. So the perfect tense is formed with the helping verb have. So some form of have, have, has, our present, had is past, will have is future, um, and the past participle of the verb, okay? Um, the helping verb have changes to match the tense and the subject, okay? So if it's pr uh, present perfect or past perfect or future perfect, it's going to be the helping verb. The, we're going to change the form of have. The past participle does not change. So what, regardless of what your main verb is, you're going to use the past participle form, which on the chart is the last column, the fourth column on the verb chart. So the present perfect tense, we're going to use, um, it is an action that happened at some indefinite time in the past, or it's an action that started in the past and continues into the present. So there's specific times when we would want to use present perfect. Um, we wouldn't want to use it um, in every situation. So the tense is formed by using the present tense form of the helping verb. In this case, that would be have or has, depending on your subject, and the past participle of your main verb. <clears throat> so for example, Becky has visited her grandmother often. In this case, this is present perfect of visit, okay? Um, we use the present tense of the helping verb, has, Becky is third person singular. Um, we would replace her with the pronoun she. So has is the correct form. She has, Becky has. And then the um, past participle of visit is visited with the ed on the end. So has visited. Another example, they have played soccer for five years. So in this case, we again have present tense of have of the helping verb. Um, they is your subject, it's plural, so have is correct, they have. And then the past participle of your verb, which is played with ed on the end. So they have played soccer for five years. Now in this first one, this is an example of an action that happened at some indefinite time in the past, right? So this is a past action, right? She has visited. It's not something that's occurring in the present, um, but it's present perfect because we use the present tense of the helping verb. That's why we call it present perfect. And the perfect tense in general is an action that has happened in the past. This is just indefinite. We know she has visited often, we just don't know when. In this case, <coughs> in the second case, excuse me, again, we have an action that has started in the past. This is an example of the second one. It started in the past, but it's continuing into the present. So when we say they have played soccer for five years, we're implying that they're still playing, right? That they're still continuing to play in the present. Um, but it started in the past, uh, five years ago. So we use the present perfect. Again, this is a past action. This is something, just because we say present perfect doesn't mean it's a, an action that's happening in the present. It's an action that happened in the past or started in the past. But we're just using the present tense of the helping verb. So that's why it's called present perfect. Um, so let's look at the verb jump as an example. Okay. So... I have jumped, okay, so um, this is singular first person. We use have and the past participle of jump. This is plural first person. We have jumped. Then second person, you have jumped. This would be one you, and then this would be the plural you if there were more than one of you have jumped. And then third person, he, she, or it as your subject has Again, present tense, we change that to has from have, and then the plural would be have again, they have jumped. So in all cases, we're using the present tense form of the helping verb, the past participle of the verb. Past perfect, as you can imagine, is again a past action, okay? Um, in this case, we use it when you have two actions that happened in the past, and we use it for the one that happened first in the past. So it's further away, it happens before another past action started. Okay, so if you're thinking about a timeline and you have your present, we have two things that happened in the past. The one furthest back is the one that we used past perfect for. The nearer past action, we just use simple past tense for. Um, this tense is formed by using the past tense of the helping verb. That's why it's called past perfect. 
had, and then the past participle, again, same participle of your main verb. So an example would be yesterday, Charles had visited the museum before he ate lunch. So in this case, Charles did two things yesterday. He had lunch and he visited the museum. The one that he did first was visit the museum. So this is the one that gets past perfect. The ate lunch, ate is simple past tense, right? He ate lunch. So this would be the past perfect, had past tense, visited past participle. Another example, Brenda had already eaten lunch when Becky invited her to join them. So Becky invited her. These are both past actions. These were two things that have already happened. Becky inviting Brenda and Brenda eating. So the one that happened first was Brenda eating, right? She did that before Becky invited her. So we used the past perfect for the one that happened first, had eaten. And then simple past tense for invite, invited. So we look at the past perfect, because that's the one we're focusing on. We, again, we use the past tense of the helping verb had and the past participle of eat, which is eaten. That would be the one in the furthest to the right, the fourth column on your chart. If you find eat, it's eat, eating, ate, eaten. Eaten is the past participle. <clears throat> so future perfect is a tense that we use when we're going to have two actions that happen in the future. So present perfect and past perfect are both events that happen in the past. Future perfect is going to happen in the future. But we have two things that are going to happen in the future. So the one that happens first is the one that we're going to use the perfect tense for. The one that's going to happen second in the future um, is going to get simple future tense. And again, this tense is formed using the past participle of our main verb. They've all used that. And then we're going to change the helping verb to future tense. So the future tense of our helping verb is will have. An example, Becky will leave for France in June, but she will have graduated first. So in this case, we have two events that are going to happen in the future. Becky's going to leave for France and she's going to graduate. The one that's going to happen first is graduate. So we use the future perfect tense, will have graduated, okay? And this is an ED on the end, it's the past participle. But we have the future tense of the helping verb, so it is an action that's going to happen in the future. It's just going to have already happened when she leaves for France. So when she leaves for France, this will now be past. That's why we use the perfect tense for it. Um, and then the second action, leaving for France, gets simple future tense. Becky will leave. So if we compare our perfect tenses, okay, it is always the helping verb, which is some form of have, that changes. The main verb always is the same. So anytime you have a perfect tense, you're always going to be using some form of have in the past participle form of your main verb. So have or has, which are present tense of have, plus the past participle of your main verb equals the present perfect. So it's called perfect because it has the past participle of our main verb. And it's present perfect because we have the present tense of the helping verb. So had, which is past tense, plus the past participle is past perfect. So again, it's perfect tense because we're using the past participle of our main verb. But it's past perfect because we use the past tense of the helping verb. And then future perfect, again, it's perfect because we have the past participle, okay? And then it's future perfect because we use the future tense of the helping verb. So the past, present, past, or future is the tense of the helping verb. And the, the fact that it's perfect, that it's a perfect tense, is because we're using the past participle of the main verb, which again is that fourth column. So let's look at a couple examples. Um, to watch, okay, is going to be the verb that we use, and we're going to take a look at it in all three tenses. So in present perfect, we use present tense of the helping verb, the past participle, which is watched with an ed on the end. I have watched every season of The Amazing Race. So this is an action that happened in the past, okay, it's just indefinite. I have watched every season of The Amazing Race. 
The past perfect uses the past tense of the helping verb plus the present, the past participle with the ed. I had watched last week's episode when the dogs needed to go out. So I have two things that happened last week. Um, I watched the episode of Amazing Race and the dogs needed to go out. So the one that happened first was watching the episode, then the dogs need to go out. So I use past perfect for the one that happened first using past tense of the helping verb, past participle of the main verb I had watched. Simple, ten, simple past tense for the second action needed. Future perfect, okay? I will grade projects next Sunday, but I will have watched the next episode first. So again, two actions are gonna happen in the future. I will grade projects and I will watch the next episode. Um, the one that happens first is watching the next episode, so I use future perfect. I do that by using the future tense of my helping verb, will have, and the past participle of my main verb, watched. I will have watched. The second action gets simple future, will grade. And then if we use an irregular verb to see with the same sentences, Future perfect, again, I use the present tense of the helping verb and the past participle of the main verb see, which in this case is seen. I see, I am seen. I saw would be past form. I have seen, seen is your past participle form. So I use the see, I use seen plus have, present perfect. I use had, which is past tense, and seen, which is the past participle, to get past perfect. I had seen last week's episode when the dogs needed to go out. And for future perfect, I will use the future tense of my helping verb and the past participle seen. I will have seen the next episode first. So again, seen doesn't change. Whether it's present perfect, past perfect, or future perfect, I'm always using seen. Okay, the spelling of my main verb, I'm simply changing the tense of the helping verb to change which perfect I want.